to another video here on Free Will Photos. And this is going to be a quick one, but I think it's going to be value added for those of you who are looking to really increase the colors and kind of bring back the life to an image. Now, here is a photo that I took a little bit earlier today, and I've already done some basic edits, but I moved it to the AI match. Now, this is what the image looks like straight out of camera or the raw version. And then when I hit AI match, this is what I get. Now, this is okay, but it's not as true to life as what it used to look like or what it did look like when I photographed it. And one of the ways that I can really bring back some of that color is by coming over to the local adjustments tab. And I'm just going to reset that. And I'm going to use a tool that I've used before, which is the color range tool. I'm going to go ahead and activate that, grab the picker tool, and I'm going to sample somewhere here on the actual leaf where the pink was a little bit more uh, vibrant and saturated. Now I'm going to hit the letter O and anything that's white is what is being collected or sampled inside of this particular mask. So what I want to do is pull to the left on the color range mask here and kind of just bring that back into those leaves and the area that I think this should have been applied to, or at least what I remember being a little bit more vibrant and saturated. And then what I'm going to do is grab the feather tool. And like always, I recommend that if you use these range mask tools or anything of that sort, you should probably always throw a little bit of a feather on there. Now I'm going to hit the letter O because I think that got where I wanted it to go. And the next thing that I'm going to do is change my blend mode over to color. So I'm going to click the gear icon, hit the drop down here, come all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to select color because I want this to really just affect the color. Now, what's cool about this is if I pull up on the exposure slider, it almost becomes like a saturation slider. And this is going to come in handy when I really want to start fine tuning how much color I'm implementing into the image. Because if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it's fairly subtle. And if that works for your image, then you're good to go. That's a great way of adding in color to your overall image because I'm not modifying the tonal range anymore. I'm only modifying color information and it's only going to the areas that I have masked here in white. No, that's a mouthful. You know, you can always drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you if that's something that is just a little confusing and you're like, Chris, what are you talking about? Now, here's where I think we can really dive a little bit deeper and make these colors look a little bit better. And this is going to be a season of taste for your image, but we're going to come down to the color section. And like I said, I remember these being a little bit more vibrant. So what I'm going to do is just push up on the vibrancy until they start to get back to that color that I want. Now, these were kind of backlit uh, because the sun was up at the top here, shooting down through this tree and I was below the leaf. And whenever you photograph something, especially leaves or something that's translucent, when it's backlit, you can lose a lot of color because of the direction of the light. And that's the reason why I'm trying to pull this back because I remember these being a little bit more purple. So what I'm also going to do is kind of move the tint over to the magenta side so I can get that color that I remember seeing in the leaf. Now notice I didn't make like a huge move, right? I could have went all the way over here and that's just weird, right? The goal here is all about subtlety. Now I can, you know, leave it at seven and that's probably going to be okay. Uh, and then same thing with the saturation. If I want to crank that up, I can pull this up and it's going to come out looking pretty decent, but I don't want to go too crazy with it. Now, if you find that in your particular image, you go a little too crazy. Let's say maybe I, I pushed the orange really hard. Well, the beautiful thing about on one is that you can just pull down on this opacity slider and really blend that back into your image. And as you can see, I need a lot of blending and it's still not really blending the way that I would like it to. So you can overdo it. I honestly don't believe I need any temperature adjustment. So we'll go ahead and pull this all the way back up. And I mentioned earlier that you can fine tune everything using your exposure slider. Well, think of this kind of like a, a volume knob as well, that if I pull this all the way up, you can see how it saturates everything like crazy. If I pull this all the way down, it starts to desaturate that area. Again, because I'm using the, co the color blend mode, then my exposure slider becomes another saturation slider, uh, or it can function like a saturation slider. So what I'm going to do is just pull 
pull that up about a third of a stop and i think that that gets me back to the color that i remember seeing on the uh tree when i was photographing so if i turn this off it's a little dull and not really punchy turn it back on and it's nice and right where i would expect it to be now i could go in and do the exact same thing for these greens so i'll go ahead and add an adjustment click on my mask go to the color range tool grab the picker select something that would have been in that range hit the letter o i'm going to back this down until it just goes on to those greens and because i know that the greens are a little bit more of a uh contrasted color here i'm going to select more of those like always i think you need to feather these items or, or these masks and then i'm just going to reset that so it's not an exposure adjustment i'm going to change my gear mode or my blend mode over to color and then i'm just going to use the exposure slider by itself on this one and i'm going to figure out how much more green do i want to pump into this image so if i wanted to get like really green then i can go uh probably probably somewhere about here. Now that may be a very, very subtle adjustment. So for the sake of YouTube and compression and all that good stuff, I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way up pretty high. So that way it really comes through uh, because I want this to really shine. So that way you can see what I'm trying to articulate uh, as I work on this particular image. And then the last thing that I would do for this image is just add a vignette. The way that I do that is I add a local adjustment hit the letter m go ahead and click right in the center we're going to change this over to vignette and i'll leave it set to center and i'm just going to make this a little bit wider and then feather this off off of the image like so and now i have my vignette that may be a little too strong so if it is all i'm going to do is pull up on my exposure and not make it so strong i think that works out so here is the before photo which looks great coming straight out of camera i was actually really pleased with this particular shot and here is what the final edit would look like now obviously jumping from the original to the final edit it is drastic with those pinks that i modified here but understand on the day when i photographed it this is what those leaves look like which is what caught my eye in the first place which is why i wanted to restore the color so hopefully you found value in this content if you did you know what you do you smash the like button if you're new here hit that subscribe button if you don't have on one photo raw already, you can save 20% at checkout by using free will photos 20 on anything that you do at the on one store or whenever you check out. If you got questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.